live. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the Boston Indies Talk Show and Happy Hour, Season 2. That's right, we survived another month. Hard to believe, uh, quite frankly, but here we are, Season 2, Episode 1. We got a great show for you tonight, and I got some fun surprises for you all uh, as part of the show here. But first, to kick things off, just a couple quick announcements. First up, of course, I'm Chris Mayer here from Boston Indies. You can follow Boston Indies on Twitter, at Boston Indies. Uh, you can also get on our meetup page, meetup.com slash Boston Game Dev, to follow all the fun stuff that's going on around here. And uh, yeah, let's go through just a couple announcements about stuff that's going on around town uh, in the scene. If anybody in the chat has any uh, you know, game-related events to, to promote, just drop those in the chat and I'll read them out. But I do have three right here. First up, Boston Unity Group with Michael Berto. I believe that's the pronunciation. Apologies, Mike, if you're out there. Uh, August 26th. That's going to be at meetup.com slash b-u-g-boston-unity-group. Or you can probably just search Boston Unity Group on Meetup. Elliot just posted the link. Very easy. That's going to be a great one. Mike is a, a super smart guy. He's 19. He's working on this game with these influencers. Really uh, super impressive. Uh, August 23rd, Josh Galecki is going to be running another one of those demo nights. You can find more information about that in the Slack, slack.bostongamedev.com. Uh, that's in the uh, events channel. And finally, Boston VR is going to have an event August 24th. Uh, you can find out more about that at meetup.com slash boston-virtual-reality. Uh, it's about careers in XR, if that's a thing you're into. I also just really quickly wanted to bump Boston Compass. Uh, if you're into, you know, arts and music, maybe check out Boston Compass. They do a, I think it's bi-monthly newspaper that kind of details a bunch of cool stuff going on around town. You can find that at issuu.com slash bostoncccompass, or to search Boston Compass or Brain Arts, or, you know, something in Google. But two cool things coming up from that are, uh, uh, Boston, uh, that were promoted by them are Boston Cyber Arts is running a bunch of virtual programming right now, including a, a cool website called ghostcity.com, uh, which is a kind of virtual experience that you can check out. Uh, and there's also a, a art fair coming up called Area Code Art Fair that's uh, focused on New England artists that looks really cool. So check those out, and, uh, that's going to do it for me. Let's kick off the show. Let's go! And... Go for it. Hey! It's true, we're back. Zyba, so do you feel like you're a year older at this point? Several, yeah. Um... I can't believe the network picked us up for a second season. I, is the network Chris or the Boston community at this point? Um, it's whoever's letting us. I don't know, man. <laughs> Hi, fiction, everyone. Fiction of the show only goes so far. We're doing it all ourselves. We've given ourselves permission uh, to do the show, and we're loving it. And I'm happy to be back. Jiro. Uh, I'm also happy, but like Chris, Chris, do you notice? Like, kudos to Chris. Look at this. Look at this gorgeous new setup that he. He, uh, he whipped up for everyone. This is uh, courtesy of Chris and Luigi, or Luigi and Chris, and uh, everything's in 3D, so we're like, I don't know, one dimension, more dimensionality. Yeah, I'm going to be distracted looking at this stream the whole yeah, time. Yeah, we should just watch ourselves. <laughs> just hold on while I watch myself broadcast it. This is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, next up, I guess, live VR broadcast where people can sit in this room and watch the TVs. I don't know. I'm, I'm happy with this. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Let's yeah. let's let's roll right in. So today we're going to be talking about showboating, and then we have a special guest. But then before <laughs> that, I would say, like, can you catch lightning in a bottle twice in one lifetime? How? What? In huh? a jam jar. In a jam jar. Got it. So uh, we are doing. Uh, we are going to kick off season two. Uh, our announcement we're kicking off is that next week we are going to do our first ever. Uh, bit show game jam and now this i'm calling it a lightning jam um the idea being it is going to be so as you know bit show is our little jib jab in here for, for a half hour or so and then we have a happy hour immediately following in the zoom where people come in and talk and so next week that happy hour is going to be in itself a self-contained jam we're going to limit it to one hour which is of course wildly 
problematic for a game jam. It it's absolutely it's perfect. I mean, we, yeah. we showed the video off last time, right? Who right. is here for the Xeno Overpass? Uh, first of all, the jam. Like, let's hear it. If you were in the actual jam 10, 15, 20, 35 years ago, uh, or if you saw the documentary that we showed last time as a closer for last season. Uh, do we have? <laughs> yeah, we do. I don't we know. Maybe I'm looking for a show of hands from the audience. Chris uh, has uh, sound effects now as well, which he's going to purposefully overuse, and that would be like there you go. <laughs> yeah, Luigi got banned from Twitter. So I just want I just want to hype people up uh, uh, that it's going to be the easiest thing to participate in. You know, when you think jam, you're like, oh no, it's a commitment of this or that. Like, no, if you already hang out in the happy hour, um, we're going to have uh, roles that are semi-automatically distributed. Uh, the pressure is going to be low. The quality bar is going to be low. The journey is going to matter way more than the destination. Um, and it's going to be an opportunity for you to just interact with some of the people here surrounding BitShow, watching BitShow, interact in a little bit more uh, a fluid way, a new way, play with some game technology. And we're going to, at the end of it, have a tiny little something, no matter how terrible, that our community. It's going to be awesome. Zenover Pass was awesome. This is going to be even more awesome. Just saying. Hashtag. Yeah. So the one thing we do need to argue about a little bit beforehand uh, in the in today's happy hour in the Slack, whatever, is if we have like leanings towards one game engine or something else, because I'm going to do some setup beforehand so that when time comes next happy hour, just plug in be like, boom, you're the artist. Boom to that. Here's your Google Drive. Yep, Drop done. the files there. Yep. Check this out of GitHub. And, you know, and then an hour later, we'll have a documentary. We'll have a game. We'll have a press kit. We'll have a Twitter account. We'll have a TikTok dance. Uh, so that's 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 the whole goal right there. Right. That sounds awesome. All right. That's, that's my hype up for next week. Put it on your calendars. Uh, 830 to 930 next week. Cool. Um, hey, Chair, how you been? I've been doing well. Uh, how are you? Sweet. You still uh, hate you... Unreal? Uh, um, uh, Unreal and I have our ups and downs. Um, I took some time off. I took a vacation. Oh, we that's right. Gone. While you were on, uh, yeah, on, where'd you go? Well, I pushed the couches together and slept in the living room with my wife. She didn't. This wasn't. This wasn't a like get out. You need no. We both went and camped in the living room. That's and we cool. turned it on a ten-hour video of crickets and stars. That is awesome. You made a boat. Yeah, it was nice. My wife and I sometimes make a boat, and then like we, uh, you know, we we, do, we don't do the cricket thing. So that's going to be like a value add. I learn something every day. Yeah, it's good. We also. Um, we uh, we continued to play um, Animal Crossing wrong by proceeding in absolutely no way and just sleeping on cots around the island while we own virtually nothing. Uh, but that's also a good one, ambient, to leave on. We had a little avatars of ourselves um, camping under an open sky, and the aurora actually kicked in, which is a somewhat awesome. rare event in yep. Animal Crossing. Yep. So we went to sleep with that on. It was nice. So you staycationed in a sort of like a very and interesting... We rested, rejuvenated, and ready to wrestle with the Unreal Engine. Our guest today like referred to Zyba as the most artistically sensed. Uh, she didn't use those ter- to those words, but like the, uh, the, the, indie with the, the much more neutral verging on. Aggressive. She said that you were incredibly creative, or this is what I took that you were very creative. And that is like uh, borne out. Uh, I think that, while you're your staycation, I think. I think Notice I, that I did not mention any particular awards that prove out your creativity. Thank you. Um, I'm really enjoying the part where we rev up uh, uh, interpreting what our guests said while they're in the part where they've been instructed to remain quiet before we introduce them. Oh yeah, and so she keeps le- them, she keeps just sort of like all wound up. Yeah, out of hate, like, no. But, but Kim and Kellyanne's a good sport. She do, she does keep getting up out of her seat though, and so we have to like fill time because we see her in the Zoom meeting and she gets up and then we're like, where the is she going? And then she comes back and she's got this sort of angry like, I just smoked outside out back look. Uh, no, she was like, well, let's, um, let's here's what I'm up to. More. Let's go through our, uh, uh, let's see what the community has been doing. There's our last segment before we uh, finally unleash her. And let All right, her sure. All right. So the community, of course, has been very busy. They didn't stop us because we stopped. I'm shocked. Um, Chris, Chris has put together a nice little uh, presentation here. He, he grabbed, grabbed his slides. He's getting more stylish every time. Yeah, it looks There's good. even presenters notes he's provided, which is fantastic. No, those uh, are mine. Fuck. Uh, oh, you sorry. wrote all those notes? Yeah, of course I wrote those notes. I got to do something. I got to do the bare minimum on for this show. <laughs> all right, let's go. Well, then do the bare. Let's get started. Okay, we talking about Swim Sanity out now on Steam. Uh, Ahmed and Khalil uh, o- over at Decoy Games were on Bit Show, I guess one hundred and four, and we 
uh, you know, raise your other hand if you played on the Zoom call after the stream. They were, I would say, uh, unsurprisingly better at it than the rest of us were, but they were also really fun to play with. And the game was very good too. I love that. We got to interview a guest and then immediately like community play their game online afterwards. Yeah. That was like peak games, community behaving like games players. I don't know. I don't, it's good. Let's do it again sometime. <clears throat> what would you give if you had a show about video games, like a cartoon, and you give it a score out of 10? Three. I would score it a three. Or whatever tortured segue you're making, it's I don't know. It's I just, terrible I've been, game. I've, uh, yeah. Uh, Joe, wildly talented uh, and super nice uh, Oreo cookie enthusiast, um, has uh, uh, been putting out. He just put out today the second episode of his uh, his sitcom episodic serial uh, uh, game on on. Uh, EGS, yeah, yeah. I said episodic, and then I was going to say Epic Store, and I got confused because I was saying Epic twice. So I thought I was repeating myself. Episodic. That's oh, epic sh- yeah. that's like that's a branding opportunity. You named it wrong, Chris. All right. Yeah. There's a lot more to be said about it. we got to move on. we got a lot of stuff here. Yep. Okay. Um, no, you did everything great. It was great. You're doing great. Let's move on to the Seed Kickstarter. Combat farming during a pandemic. Transforming wastelands into utopias. Burst evil seeds that become vegetation and actually help you. Uh, they So they're, uh, they just start their Kickstarter. It is asking for 12K, and they are a quarter of the way there. 50 backers, 30 days to go. I think their uh, their biggest reward is kind of a nice one, the Seed Tiny House Experience. Meet and spend a day with Eddie and a couple teammates at Eddie's Tiny House. How tiny is the house? I don't know. You're going to have to pay uh, a bunch of money to find have, out. Have you ever seen Edwin Eddie uh, um, present about his game in person? No. Like at Mass Digi or something? No. He's a hell of a passionate presenter. He's he's always got this white uh, uh, makeup, and, and uh, uh, I, I've seen few indies in our community present their game with the uh, with the fervor that he does it's always really impressive i like gusto yeah next up um oh five letter each oh will Briley. oh um <laughs> where's Listen, will is he here today yeah will Briley's a madman is what the slide says yeah a madman a, a literal magician uh i don't know personally hero of mine who's way more experienced in the talk show genre than even we are no offense um he's just a a ridiculous creative powerhouse who um i i i have some sort of platonic crush on he's just so amazing and that, his, sorry yeah. i was gonna say like i didn't know that this was will's game it came out on you know on uh i'll segue into it in briefly in a minute but i saw that on uh the micro trailer speed and I'm like this is amazing what the hell is it and it, of course yeah. it's will yeah and i didn't really i so I, I talked about this game for a while and you only told me about whatever's going on the surface and as, as uh, Chris points out, it, or so it's a three gigabyte game, so I don't know. It's there's something deeper. <laughs> well, running. that's like their, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, before right. we move on to to dev log time, my big, uh, I want to say my wait. Is this non dev log? What is the difference between dev log and non dev log stuff? Is there a distinction? It wasn't literally in the Slack dev log channel. Oh, okay, okay. I, wanna, I just want to say that like, well, we've put up, uh, I've put up a micro trailers Discord, and if anybody is interested. Uh, I am like I'm piping hot gifs onto a channel, and uh, for you know everybody wants to join and talk about games and how awesome they are and how awesome find the letter H is. Please go to that Discord channel. Tell me how terrible it is. Great. All right, now devlog. All right, what's going on devlog? Oh, Eric Hamill's working on his um <clears throat> his Game Boy game. Looks so good. Yeah. I refuse to say more until he gives us all copies to play. Oh, all right. Fair enough. So uh, over to the next game is Evan Martinez. He, uh, busy bee this weekend, one more month later, working on implementing some cool buildings. Uh, this is his game that is influenced in part by Smash TV. And hands up if you love Smash TV or Robotron if you go back that far. So I haven't played his latest stuff, but it's pretty good. All right. Um, oh yeah, Chris Chung working on his uh, uh, his shaders to Pokemon's. Um, I love watching Chris's little old uh, little experiments. Um, and he's made interactive toilet paper for his cat game. Just okay. I'm, I want to let that sentence just ride. Fair enough. 
Uh, next up, Dave Wingrove and his company, best known for big mountain snowboarding. And if you remember, he and Kevin used to come by the, uh, the I mean, uh, they both been in the Boston industry for a while. I haven't seen them since old American Twine Building uh, Indie Game Collective, but uh, Dave used to do uh, a bunch of mudding back in the day. And I think their uh, next item up is their first, their first game in a long time to iOS and Android stores. Probably today, today, Trick Shot Bowling 2. Nice. Yeah. A lot of, you can see, I like the, the progression shot of one and two there. All right. Just a couple more here. Oh, oh, Matt Brelsford has got this mysterious uh, uh, video here. Did um, you skip which, Alex? Or are you like, hey, Alex? I, Alex? I did. All right. Well, I'll you do Alex. I'm already on Matt. All right, fine. I'll do Alex. I'm just like, we're going to do it in order or out of order. He's just trying to figure out what the hell we're doing right now. Go I don't know. And maybe Chris wrote this. Alex is a BPM organizer. We don't know who Alex is. We, we know Alex and we've probably played Glitch Dog. Uh, he used to be a product manager on Star Trek Timelines and GOT Ascent. He is looking for feedback on the, uh, the newly completed Glitch Dog. So post your thoughts in the dev log. And he's, uh, he's shared some key learnings for the project as well. Cool. You guys also skipped Chad's game, which was like two back. So we're, we're just gonna. I'm sorry. That it. was okay. that was on me. Season two is rough. <laughs> yeah, season three is looking iffy. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, no, Chad. Uh, finish the maths. How very British. What a way to. It is British. Um. Yeah. Um. And I'm not seeing maths. I'm seeing uh, exciting, mysterious. Uh, uh, shadowy nighttime adventuring and and uh, intentional low fidelity looks nice. Yep, and I don't know what order we're going in next. So uh, I just, all I wanted to say was about Matt Brelsford. I was excited. He posted some shadowy figures, and there's no explanation, and we don't have to because he's our guest next week. But yeah, that's fair. We should not shut up about Matt because that would spoil the surprise. And finally. Moving on, John Bellini. He's showing off. He's still working. He's our guest in season, a guest in season one, and he's showing off uh, more work on his Alpha One game, which is fun and evolving. And he's doing all so many roles on it, and it's exciting and inspiring. Um, and yay to everybody in Devlog! I'm glad you kept working. But next time, uh, when we're on vacation, you should be too. <laughs> you should stop. You stop. Well, that was a great show, everyone. A great 45 <laughs> minute show. Uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Sorry, Kelly, and we couldn't have you on the show all right we should we should probably actually have i don't feel like we've ever tortured a guest as much in waiting as, i know there's kelly in here before she's worth waiting for come on her stuff's awesome <laughs> okay then let me do let me do the formal intro this is my my my, my privilege here as, as, as a host to do this all right uh all right, all right so tell me not to talk today's guest is the founder and mastermind of Green Door Labs, Kelly and Adams. She's a creative director, an accomplished producer, a businesswoman, an educator, theater innovator, museum veteran, champion of getting shit done, and 30 other equally impressive things, and a joy to be around. Please welcome Kelly and Adams. Guys, oh, please. Oh, thank you. Oh, everybody, it's great to see you. Chris, I hope you have like a, you've got like a big applause. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Hey, how are you guys seeing this cool like thing that Chris built? Like all I see. Are you is kidding regular... me? We didn't even tell you where to watch the show. <laughs> no, we're just, we're just we're just watch the show. We're, no, we're I, right I see. Like I see you, you guys in regular. Yeah, you know, it's like a, in a it's chat. Like a a shitty. Show. Show. Oh my oh. gosh! Go to like if you're seeing this, you are at Twitch TV slash Boston Indies, which Kellyan is is going to be able to get to in a minute, and I'm going to sort of like fill time. And twitch and tv slash dot com dot yeah? twitch oh no, no twitch, twitch, dot, twitch dutch dot tv you got to be like the kids with the tv domain what is that two <laughs> right and then um and then we you know, make sure to mute it otherwise you're you'll hear two okay. of me which you right like. you're gonna one hear of, all that one of me is just way too much and anyway oh uh, hey okay that's really cool right. yeah. whoa i don't know how to it's now seeing <laughs> what all of you see I'm sorry i don't know how to do this <laughs> this is where we're so... there we go oh uh, zoom into kellyan um, I don't know. We just like so. That's really you know, cool. Free free show. Uh, you know, Kellyan. 
Well, actually, you know what? So Kelly, you, you, if you had to walk into a room as you've just done and give uh -huh. some sort of high level uh, statement about like, here's what I exist to do. Oh, would you be like, I'm, I'm here to. Break shit. <laughs> in this universe to make some shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I make weird stuff. That's what I do. You know, I, I like to like what, what keeps me going is that this idea that, you know, uh, doctors can make people live longer, but artists can give them a reason why. You know, yeah. so uh, so even though, you know, I might not be able to save the world if I can sort of make somebody happy for an hour and a half, uh, you know, build a little bit of magic into their life. I think I've done something with my existence. Well, so there know, there's worthwhile. like so I think a great quote. Uh, although maybe a little dated man does not live on, live on bread alone. So we're not making bread, we're making the arts. That's we're right. making the arts, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, and it's like, it's a tough question right now because there's this whole question of like essential workers, right? And it's like, and when you see essential workers, you see these people who are like the bedrock foundation of our civilization, right? So it's like, these are, you know, doctors and people who like care for children and, you know, people who like just take care of our, our basic needs like, uh, you know, sanitation and uh, construction and like making sure that we have food and a food supply chain and like, like really essential stuff and you know and you look at your work and you're like how am i essential <laughs> you know like am i doing something essential and how do i make sure that my work is essential? this is the heaviest bitch show ever the pre-show is so, all I'm like sorry. Were... you asked me that question it's not my fault you should have asked me about my it. lipstick i could have gone off for half an hour on world war ii oh yeah i love that that is a quote that's a kelly <laughs> quote right there should ask me about my lipstick i could out i talk i kind of talked about world war ii <laughs> Which I guess she, I, she will in a minute. Cool, but I don't want to leave the topic. I love I what you started. I, I can. You, 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 were, um, you started with this defense of the arts, which I, I believe in and I love about it, its value there. So much of your work has an educational bent, um, mm -hmm. right? It's not this pure entertainment, just make you happy. It's also, there's this goal beyond entertainment of education, um, mm -hmm. which that speaks that you're trying to do something even beyond just make people happy or satisfied or interested with art, but you seem to have this compulsion to teach. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it, isn't it? A compulsion, <laughs> right? Oh, oh God. Um, so I am a teacher. I, I admit it openly. Uh, yeah, I was a middle school teacher for a long time. What? Like I lived in China. You didn't yeah, know that? Yeah. Oh, know? that's what you did in China, right? In China. Yeah, so I did in China. Yeah, in I lived China. in China for five years. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, so I lived in China for five years. I taught in an international school there. And uh, yeah, and then I came back to the US. It was that this actually, this is how I got into the game, uh, sort of the game world, right? So so I was in China and this was, oh, what was that? It was around 2003, 2002. Yeah, I was there from around 2002 to around 2008, somewhere around there. Um, and it was like the Wild East, you know, it's like Shanghai in 2002, like you could do anything. Uh, and so I was hired by a game design company because they're like, you white girl, you speak Chinese somewhat, kind of, and you're 24, come manage this team for us. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I'm 24, I can manage a game design team, no problem. I have no experience. Um, yeah, so, so that's how it started in the game design world. Um, so we built, um, thanks to me, an absolutely terrible educational game. <laughs> like I look back at it and I'm like, oh, what did I do to them? Um, yeah, but uh, so so I, I, I built out this game for and with them. I loved it. You know, I loved managing a team. I loved having products come out. You know, I liked the, the, the speed of it. Um, but I had sort of already signed up to come back to the U.S. to get my master's in education. And, uh, and as I was doing this educational game, it became like really clear to me how poor my, my, my pedagogy was, right? Um, so came back to the US, got my master's. Um, it was actually my full intent to head back to Shanghai again. I had started my own, uh, I, I had started my own version of like children's games to teach language. I've always been really into second language acquisition. I just think it's kind of interesting. And then I met my delightful husband and uh, yeah, and it's like, you know, you don't get to meet your spouse very often, right? You, once, ideally. We, right? Every so day. Like, and, like, I mean, no, like meet at six them, to seven o'clock. Oh, fair enough. Them. You get to see them often. Yeah. So, uh, so I was like, well, I, I, I guess I'm sticking around Boston for a while. So uh, er, er, uh, Herbivore was asking how big was the team? Um, let's see, the team in China, I would say that probably guesstimating 30 people. Um, I didn't do any of the numbers. So uh, a pretty big team, first time out, new country. 
was I know it was good. ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Yeah, oh, it was it was really cool. That's awesome. That you're like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. That's hubris. Hubris. <laughs> Kelly, is your yeah. background, is the background, not your personal background, but your Zoom mm -hmm. background, is that from one of your games? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, this is Save the Munbacks. This is um, what stuff is from what, uh, well, let me tell you all about Save the Munbacks. Um, so Save the Munbacks was the original historical 1898 campaign from the American Society for the Protection of Magical Creatures. Um, so you may or may not know about this, you know, essential nonprofit in the magical world um, or about the plight of magical creatures uh, in North America, really throughout the planet. But you know, we focus on preserving and protecting magical creatures in our own local ecosystem. Um, so in 1898, Henrietta Hemingway and uh, Mina Hall, uh, they got together and they decided that they were going to uh, work and rally the, the Boston community um, to save the uh, northern crested Dimmoth Munbacks, which was a magical creature that was gravely in danger of uh, extinction. And so they rallied the, the local wizarding community uh, at the Hemingway Estate, also known as the Eustace Estate out in Milton, Mass. Um, and together we figured out what was going on with the Munbacks and why the Munbacks was failing in, the, in its natural habitat. And we were able to sort of do some things to balance its ecosystem and uh, get things set. And, and this is why you see Munbaxes running free you know, like whenever you go out in into the wild and you see a mudbax, you know, you have those those well, the two places lousy with them. It's crazy. I know. I that's true. It's true. You know, it's like you know, there's gonna have to be some culling of the herd, you know, these mudbaxes. I mean they're about five feet tall as well and covered with feathers and slime. So I mean it's not an attractive character, but I, I love that when asked what what say the mudbax is, what this is, this project of yours, you've up front, first and foremost, and all you've responded so far is the artistic nature of it, the function, the, the, the result of it, the, uh, the, the beautiful vision you had and you executed and you didn't, as many um, uh, game developers, myself included, would do, launch into the insane effort behind what it was to produce such a thing and that you rightfully, oh, you yeah. have this right to- I think I blocked it out. That's probably why. <laughs> No, okay, so so the insane effort for this particular production. Um, so these are pieces of art from one of my favorite artists. His name is Hilary Scott, and ah, oh, he's incredible. He builds all these great monsters. He's a Somerville artist. You should totally check him out. And uh, yeah, so I saw his work at another museum. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. So I saw I saw his work at the Higgins Armory back when that was a museum, and I was just totally blown away just ah, oh, love this guy's work and I saw him at Somerville Open Studios and I was like you know you know me like you know very quiet and retiring and I was like you're great I love you this is awesome I'm gonna make a game with your work and he was literally frightened like he was scared like he was <laughs> straight on afraid of me he was like you know like he thought that I was trying to like stalk him or I don't know um but yeah so I made that promise to myself maybe you know like seven years ago I was like I'm gonna build something with this guy's work because I love it um so we built the american society for the protection of magical creatures uh put together a partnership with historic new england uh used the eustace estate which is amazing amazing space if you ever get a chance it's milton mass um and historic new england is also like really killer um a resource because they own so many properties across New England. So if, like, I, Kelly and I have not left my house in 157 days. <laughs> what is this visiting places you're talking about? They've got really good websites. I don't know. I mean, if we ever get to build anything ever again, well, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm talking to one of their properties up in Maine right now to see if we can put together um, a socially distant Mad Hatter tea party. Yeah, because you know these beautiful houses are just hanging out, and, and they're usually really happy to work with you. Um, oh, so anyway, so we, we filled we filled this uh, this beautiful mansion full of monsters, uh, and then we created this big story around it where we were trying to preserve this creature, and uh, we it was an immersive theater piece. Uh, I did it with Lizzie Stark, uh, so Lizzie's were really killer at all of the marking stuff, and so we sort of set up this great premise. Everybody had their own characters when they came in. I mean, it was a it was a mini LARP and a puzzle hunt, sort of married those two things together. Um, yeah, and uh, we have probably about 80 people at a time solving for that particular one. And then we 
oh God, one of my one of my favorite like memories of all times were at the Eustace Estate, and we had this we had this part in the middle of the show um, where we revealed the Munbacks. The Munbacks was looking really sick. We built out this massive tank for him. I mean, you know, like maybe the size of a, of a queen bed, um, and like this gigantic sculpture in the middle of it. And we reveal it, and it's kind of like oh, looking awful. And we're like, oh no, oh no, everybody, like, the go go away. You don't want to see this. It's too awful. It's too horrible. And so all of our actors grab everybody and they bring them into these different places. And again, this mansion's spectacular, you know, filled with monsters. I've got a friend of mine who's an antiques dealer. So we filled the whole place, you know, on top of its museum units, we filled the whole place with lighting from the 1890s. Uh, hung all these candles from uh, the ceiling. So, you know, had this very Hogwarts feel to it. Um, and so there we are in ball gowns. Um, everybody runs to different um, places. Shut, shut the doors, right? And there's me and Lizzie Stark and maybe two or three other actresses in these massive ball gowns. And we're like, all right, keep ho. <laughs> we have to lift this, this massive sculpture up and we're running it out the mansion <laughs> and across the estate where we hit it in the woods <laughs> in the middle of the night, throwing uh, glow sticks the whole way. So one of my like happiest memories of life is uh, wearing a ball gown with like four other girls running a massive monster sculpture through the woods to, to hide it and then get back for the next scene. It was really fun. That is a tale told over and over in video games. <laughs> is it? Yeah, right? It's, yeah, uh, I, you know, the, the monster hiding scene. Uh, so you, you were doing these incredible things with in this non-digital game space, a lot of theater stuff, which is yeah. amazing. You are also do, do work in, in digital space. You're no stranger to that. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm moving towards our grand future closing question, which is you know trying to throw out scopes. Like, mm -hmm. what do you think, or do you even think about like the future of the relationship between digital and non digital games? The stuff you know you're doing. How how are you you have your mind straddling all of this stuff? Where are you thinking it's going? Uh, yes. So actually, I, I've, I've done digital and non-digital a lot, really, since I started, you know, and, and that works especially well with my museums, right? Because I, I do a lot of custom work for museums. And uh, yeah, so um, digital almost always works better than some sort of paper thing um, for them because, you know, it's quick and easy and, you know, easily edited. Uh, and you can the educational organizations really care a lot about um, being able to collect data on people's responses. So again, that's probably one of the greatest strengths of digital in the physical space uh, is that uh, it lets you track people and see if your messages. <laughs> I'm serious, that's, right? That sounds actually <laughs> ominous. No, but I mean, it lets you see if your messages are landing, right? So, uh, which is really hard it's hard. That's hard well, we to could do. Get more metrics on theater goers. If we could put some EEGs on them, it's no, I don't know. Absolutely. I think like watch, we could bring watch we their could, eyes. We could bring Trevor's uh, heart rate monitors in there. We could tag them and bag them and like. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so Was that... yeah. So. Sorry. Pray continue. Oh, that that's pretty much what I have to say. Yeah. Um, digital phys physical. Um, whenever I build with organizations, like I, I really try and like dig into um, what their goals are first before they build. Um, because everybody's always like, what do you want to do? I want to build something fun. I want to build something pretty. You know, like that, that's always what they say at first because they think that that's what they want. Um, but then when you start getting into it a little more, um, it's almost always something else, right? Like, um, and you know, we've, we've got to reach out to this particular group and I really want to use this particular character and you know we have to make sure that this donor is happy so like whenever anybody builds a game you know there's there's always a lot of reasons for us so when you when you mix digital and physical like that I think one of the most important things going into it is to know exactly what it is that you want so that you can build for it you know like what what interaction are you looking for and then you build for it are you able to talk about your upcoming stuff? Is that, are you allowed? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just released a game. Um, I mean, so right now it's like physical or uh, digital, digital, right? Um, so, and it's based off of the um, Save the Mundax world. Uh, so we created the American Society for the Protection of Magical Creatures. We decided to bring them to 2020 where they try and make a website. 
action? Do we say and, do we say yeah, action? So we, we sort of had fun with that. And uh, yeah, and it's it's just a puzzle hunt, um, or a, a number of puzzle hunts. Uh, sort of in the escape room tradition. And uh, I've got, uh, I've just released one game by Errol Elumir, who is a really well-known puzzle designer, um, and Ella Dawood Alzayar, who is doing a lot of stuff with um, immersive theater in Boston. He's a great writer. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and the next one uh, is gonna be released hopefully by Monday. You know, it'd be sort of, you know, filing off all the little rough edges and getting it ready to go. And then the next one will be ready to go in the next three weeks. Chris is uh, showing that right now. I guess he's showing the first one right now. And then I oh, like, is it? Oh, good. obviously we want to like, I, I think we have like negative two minutes left, but we're going to take oh, okay. those negative oh. two minutes. Uh, I don't know that like, like Chris hasn't, sh you know, shoot us off the air yet, but I also wanted to mention like mo most folks in the Boston area know you. Uh, I, I want to say most, uh, through Cl Club Drosselmeyer. Club Drosselmeyer, yes. Which brings oh, wait, us back here, to let me Second World War give II. you my. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Here we go. I got to change my background so that I can <laughs> I can go to Club Drosselmeyer. I'm living vicariously through my old shows. Um, yeah, but actually, I'm I'm working on it as we speak. I'm currently like writing for Drosselmeyer, um, which is going to be 1943 this year. First it goes up. It goes. Radio. It cycles. It, it cycles, right? I mean, because you did, you know, 19. Depending on where you put the beginning of World War II, some people say 1940. You know, three. Some people say 1917. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to get. Um, uh, yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd intended for it to be four years. I was. Uh, I started in 1939, and I was going to go back to 1939. Um, but then this year happened, um, and actually, I thought that uh, 2020 and 19. 43 were kind of interesting proxy um, because 1943 was a year where it felt like the war should have been over um, and it was just going on forever and we're kind of not making a lot of progress like D-Day hadn't happened nobody really knew what was going on we we're making some progress in the Pacific by 1943 but still you know not it the, the writing wasn't on the wall in any way shape or form and we're just like why are we still here um, and then they also had pretty regularly um, air raid drills where you would have to, um, you know, they'd set off the sirens and you would have to go in your house and you like roll down the blackout curtains and you're not allowed to use the lights and you listen to the radio for the, for the next rules. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. This idea of uh, collective unpleasant behavior in order to save us all. You know, the idea was, uh, it, in Boston was kind of interesting. The reason we did it in Boston was so that um, uh, an enemy plane couldn't see the bay. Right, because at that point they were literally looking like it was visual uh, confirmation for stuff. Um, and so if they could see lights on the land and then the ocean where there was no lights, then they would know where the um, Navy yard was. Yeah, and there were, were there like some assholes who just wouldn't turn their lights off because they didn't, you know, they didn't it believe was, in lights? Uh, it was pretty regulated. It was pretty regulated. Every block had their own air raid warden. So um, yeah, so it, it wasn't like, which is kind of interesting that we don't do it this way. You know, we've really been missing that sense of local accountability, which is something they had back then. Um, everybody was organized into blocks of 50 households. Um, we definitely don't have that now, you know? So there was like a chain of command within those 50 households. It was like, okay, you're the fire spotter and you're the person who loans first aid. And the, everybody had maps of what their uh, neighborhoods were. Has, has next so, door solved that problem for us now? Oh Isn't God, no, I, I refuse to sign up for next door. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, see, that comes to um, Kellyan's like wanting, Kellyan's personally wanting to tag all of us as, <laughs> as Boston's Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and that's that's what I'm doing, you know, well, it brings it back to the beginning, right, Zaiba, you're like, Kelly, if you could do one thing, what would you do? And I think the answer is tag everybody, um, like maybe on their ear or yeah. maybe, I don't know, on their neck or something, maybe just write a number so that I have a perfect record of who everybody is and where they are. I want to, wow. I do want to say, sorry, sorry, sorry. I do want to say that like what? far from this, Didn't you know, so coming. like, you know, we've been talking about ser serious stuff during World War II. I think Drosselmeyer is all about more dancing and, and camaraderie and a little bit of drinking and, you know, gorgeous clothing robots. and robots, actually. Yeah. Robots. Yeah. I don't know. And so robots. I know so, like we're, uh, J J John, JB Shedd says, uh, bit show is too short. <laughs> I want to sign a petition for a long form 
uh, interview two, three hours just to listen to Kelly and which Shelly. Wow. Oh God. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you mean that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we're not, hours. we're not going to do that just because like, we be canceled or I, who the, actually who's, who's <laughs> gonna go. cancel us you can us? do whatever you want do whatever we want we're indie <laughs> yeah. man which whatever, themselves whatever. can intervene out of all the channels they came down and just said no <laughs> <laughs> uh no we, we do want to leave them wanting more so i want to figure out uh get classic classic talk show stuff hype something like a link or something that's a good ender right Ooh. like yeah. yeah 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 okay all right i'm gonna i'm gonna hype uh the aspmc um, which is the American Society for the Protection of Magical Creatures. I've got some really fun games. It's funny. I, I played, I got to watch friends play it last night, and which is such a great experience. And, uh, you know, I produced these games, but I did not design them. And I was going through it being like, oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Like these designers did such a nice job. Um, yeah, so go to the T-H-E. ASPMC, American Society for the Protection of Magical Creatures, dot org. And is that all spelled there. out? Like, is it the acronym and then all the words together? No, no, no. It's just ASPMC dot org. It's just the acronym. Okay. The. Oh, the no, I got the link wrong in Twitch. Oh, no, you got it wrong. Oh, OK, here. There we go. Yeah, it's, I did it. Here, I did it. it. I got gonna, it wrong. Did you do it? Are you, do you promise? Right? I don't okay. know. Somebody in, in chat. B-A-S-P-M-C.org. There we go. Oh. Put, it, put it in the chat for you guys. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so definitely check that out. And I believe within the next two weeks, we're going to have um, Kickstarter for Club Drossemeyer live radio broadcast. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited about that. Ooh, that sounds great. I'm gonna yeah. Play. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really I, fun. I, yeah, I we... Could... I couldn't convince my wife to dress up or go dancing, but on the radio. Yeah, there we nobody go. Knows, some on the radio, you, nobody knows you're naked and wearing the exactly. same pants that you've been wearing for this last right. week. Right, exactly. Unless you announce the, it, Terrell, the unless you announce it. Oh, I don't care. Like, who's going to do, you know, who's, who's going to, like, the, Twitch can't, you know, nobody. Uh, well, they're after us anyways. Know. They kind of are. They got it <laughs> after us. Yeah, exactly. After we, uh, after we yeah. mentioned pants, Elliot, Mitchell said sweet, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of yeah. This yeah. very specific thing to comment on. Pants, well, sweet. I could not be happier than having had you on as our first guest of the second season. Thank you so much. You bet. You bet. Anytime. Oh, delight. And, uh, and I yeah, I guess so. Forever. Is this where we all like hang out together for half an hour? Is that how that goes? Yeah. So we are about to. Uh, we're going to, uh, I think we throw back to Chris for some announcements, but we're going to, we're going to remind everybody to um, uh, post their stuff in the devlog on the Boston Game Dev Slack chat, uh, play games and talk about playing games in the Play Games channel on the Boston Slack chat, um, and prepare yourself emotionally, physically, and chronologically for next week's Game Jam during the happy hour. But now it is just about time for this week's happy hour. A Let's Zoom link will be going out in the Boston Game Dev Slack. Um, if you're not there, figure out where that is, or if you're Kellyanne, we'll just tell you. Um, <laughs> Graham, Graham did it. Actually, sorry, Thank you, Graham. Already, you're already in it. This is the Slack. We are the future happy hour. People will just flood in here. I keep forgetting. That's, that. no, this is that's a Zoom perfect. meeting. We're tell, talking about the Zoom meeting that's linked from the Slack that we're re referencing on Twitch. Getting digital yeah. whiplash. This is like pointers, man. Uh, All so, I gotta do is so actually, here we're gonna we're gonna do a quick demo today. We're gonna we're gonna do a quick demo. I don't Ooh, know if you can hear for, Chris. Oh no, wait. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I right. think audio should be going out. Just taking control. Uh, we are we are gonna have the happy hour. I'm gonna I'll post the link in like four minutes. I just a couple people asked. What's the what's the setup? What's going on with BitShow? Why is it all three dimensional now? It looks it looks out of control. So uh, you know, I got a couple couple pictures and stuff ready to go. I thought people might want to see a little of this craziness. Anyway, sorry. Uh, you guys can say say your goodbyes and then we'll we'll do that. I just didn't want to. Saiba. Good for goodbye. Goodbye. Do do. Do, 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 do. Kelly and it was like I, I would also yeah. like to express uh, happiness and pleasure that I was able to talk to you on this this beautiful day on our planet Earth last night. That's very that's very general. I too am very happy that we were able to speak on this. No, it's day very specific. It's like this is it. Awesome. No, thanks so much for having me, guys. This is really fun. Oh, wait, wait, we didn't even get to talk about the BAFTA. 
<laughs> and over to you, Chris. Over to you, Chris. <laughs> Not a great story, buddy. All right. Uh, yeah, so a couple people asked. I have a couple pictures here. I don't know how I'm going to actually show, like, the Unity part of this, but I do have some fun pictures of the setup, which is getting ridiculous. I now have four monitors set up. Uh, let's just zoom over to that. Here's my, here's my office setup. You can see I have this nice green screen that's uh, kind of held up by two cans of compressed air and a ruler. Pretty, pretty legit stuff, but you would never even know, right? Uh, all right, what else we got here? This is uh, rotated slightly so you can see the screens a little better. Well, I don't know why I took this picture. Maybe I didn't intend to show both. Here's kind of the, the front. So you can see I have four monitors laid out in front of me, which is kind of a lot to keep track of, it turns out. Uh, on the far right side is the screen capture, which is what like goes onto these screens. And then the Zoom call, which I'm capturing video from. Then Unity, or sorry, no, then OBS. Then three different Unity displays, which actually I can't show because it would just show an infinite infinite uh, zoom thing. But so I actually have Unity set up to pipe out to three different displays. So display one is the like live live show cam. Display two is a preview of the uh, like what the next camera will be if I if I pan or cut or whatever to it. And then the third one is the laugh track. So I can just click on that. And... Pretty exciting, except there's also a dumb bug where all three of the different displays can accept clicks. So if I just click in this window a bunch, <laughs> yeah, and then it just, you know, starts laughing for no reason. Uh, and then, of course, show notes and uh, uh, Twitch so I can make sure everything is looking good and working correctly and all that sort of fun stuff. And then it's all driven by this MIDI controller, which I actually bought originally um, when I was doing the Greetings from Computer project, which maybe some of you have seen. I bought a handful of these things, uh, like six, I think, actually. And these are awesome because they are like $40. And I, you know, I bought, I think I bought four. Uh, so I have a bunch of labels on here that are maybe kind of hard to see, but so you can, is that, is that legible at all? Oh, and it's also backwards, cool. Uh, you know, I had to label them. It's kind of a lot, a lot of stuff. So all of all of these rows are camera positions. These control panning transitions, and then these are, uh, you know, your fun, fun effects. You can just... Oh, too much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it took me. I don't know, maybe a couple weeks to get this stuff set up. So now, like, the base is kind of working, we can start to get really weird and start adding multiplayer stuff, maybe get some, like, Twitch integration, or I mean, it'd be amazing if we could get, like, a 3D model of our guests, like, standing in the background and, like, lip sync it or something. I don't know. Sky's the limit. Now that we uh, have this stuff set up, we can really, uh, really go wild. Uh, anyway, I think that's going to do it for us today. Ooh, ooh, that was weird. Ooh, look at that. There are a couple bugs. We're figuring it out. But, uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna do it for our show today. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll, of course, be back next week, Thursday at 7.30. Uh, I'll drop the chat link in the Slack in just a minute. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it. Uh, huge thank you to Luigi, who did all the art for this. Uh, I apologize for the art crimes I committed by changing all of your lighting and removing some decals and scaling things kind of weird. Uh, I meant to ask you to look at it and see if the lighting was terrible, but uh, maybe next time on The Bit Show. Bit Show!